Um, now I want to introduce two communication models to you that transport of the ideas we have already have talked about. And the first one, the cultural encounter model of communication. It's a trial to put into a practical schema uh, the ideas of Niklas Luhmann as a sociologist, a German sociologist, or as biologist uh, Umberto Maturana and Francesco Varela, the two Chilean biological uh, psych scientists. And the one from the sociological pers perspective, the, under, the other one from the biological perspective says, uh, we are always within our own system. There's no possibility really to know about reality outside or reality of another person because when we try to describe the reality of the other person as an observer, this only means developing our own observing categories. So this means changes in our perceptions of reality. So to understand somebody means to choose a specific uh, way of self-organization uh, that gives you the idea that I can act in a way and the world is reacting in a way that I believe I understand what the world is about. Mm. And this is very abstract. It's difficult always to think that way. Mm. And I made a communication model out of it that uh, is going with this idea that's the observer's perspective uh, but it's putting it into more practical terms of how can we create a shared reality. Mm. There's still the idea of a, a shared reality, what is not really in principle in these theories. They say it's, there is no shared reality because there's no, no shared place where reality is shared. Shared reality is a notion of my reality. Mm. Let me start with and contrast this uh, with the uh, classical communication model. We habitually all have been grown up, at least in our culture, I don't know whether in India or in Asia, this is different, which is saying, when I, in my reality, and I want to tell something to a receiver, I make a message of it, I put it on the way through a channel, and if nothing is wrong, the piece of reality is uh, represented afterwards in the world of the receiver just the way it has been in my reality. And when we send an email to somebody, we hope it is like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's still a valid way to understand how uh, messages are transmitted. But uh, taking serious that this means changes in living organism as sender and receiver. This means changes in their perspective and organization of reality. And how this may change or not change totally uh, to utmost ten, uh, depends on whether it's interesting within their reality as an impulse to change their reality. And if you take in account this, your attitude to communication change, instead of saying, oh, if it's not working, that the message is really coming to the receiver, something must be wrong, either the receiver, the sender, or the channel, and we have to look uh, what is wrong and fix it. With this model, you say, oh, I wonder how it's at all possible that living organism have the idea of a shared reality because it's so much necessary to be organized that each of them has an idea of shared reality 
organizes his or her uh, behavior according to one's own ideas of shared reality and this is perceived by the other person as in accordance with their expectations. That's a complex way to do it because we have, when we are, have been brought up in the same culture, uh, we are trained on this a lot. So we think it's just normal that it works. As soon as we meet somebody from a different culture, this might be from a different continent, this might be from a different profession, this might be from, from a different social class, we find out what we thought is natural to understand what, uh, our messages <coughs> is not natural at all. And so it, this makes clear that building up a shared reality is an extra task when two cultures meet. And we understand in this model all encounters as cultural encounters. This is a, an encounter of culture. And as you heard, it doesn't mean national counter can be female culture, male culture, black culture, white culture, engineer culture, psycholo psychology culture, boss culture, employee culture. So whenever people meet, it's, there are so many levels on which culture is back Michitasa. And this model is saying, uh, in order not to be su surprised later on by not coming together, you should uh, focus very much on building up a common shared culture to a certain extent and you put energy into do doing so. And it's nothing wrong when it's difficult. It just uh, reveals how difficult it really is. It just do does not deny it. And a professional communicator should be somebody who understands that this is necessary and how to do it. So he has more responsibility for the building up of the shared reality part. If you have somebody who's not trained so well, certainly everybody does it intuitively, but it's not professionally trained. And it changes uh, also the idea of justifying my contributions to encounter. Usually, for in the helping professions, we have an idea what a person's problem is, and then we justify our intervening, our work, our earning money by inventing something that could help to solve this problem. This model, and from the biological point of view, uh, is uh, positioned differently. It's saying each organism, organism is interested to enlarge his or her own world. And in order to get exchange of goods and resources with us in the in world, he tries to, to describe the world to the other in a way that the other person motivates to exchange goods. So, if we cure a client, this means we have managed to tell to a person that their way of being is a problem we have tools for. But the motivation is, I want to grow as a, with my professional business. It's not because that's the reality of the other person and I know how to deal with it is that I successfully invite the other person in my bladder of reality in which I can organize myself very well. That's a different way to state the same process. And when you look at the history, for example, for organizational consulting or training, a fashion, a professional fashion from freelancers is brought up yeah. and they manage companies to believe that this kind of could be a, pro a contribution to their problems. Mm. And they describe it in a way that they're not sure, but are ready to try whether they can understand their problems in these terms, 
And this motivates them to pay them money to invite them. And they bring all this reality understanding, all this culture with them. And usually nobody is really aware whether this is a good cultural encounter or not. Very often it's like an infection. The idea, the professional culture that is brought into a company could be really harmful to to that company, or or at least not, doesn't make economically sense at that point. So from this model also derives a, a, a specific responsibility for the culture I bring to others. That it's possible to invite them doesn't mean I'm doing a good job. I have to be responsible for the side effects, for the implications and consequences that come with my professional work in encountering, for example, um, the company. Does it just come across that it's just a, a different didactic understanding of encounter? I'm not saying that's the way it is. I'm saying this arises different question mm-hmm. than the mechanical model <coughs> we have. We should be invited to deal with. So this model describes communication as an encounter of cultures. Does not assume that mutual understanding is normal. Each communicator involved is predominantly oriented to his or her own reality. And this is why it's necessary to study the realities of the sender and of the recipient to understand how they could do something related to each other. And in complex systems, it's never the job is never done. It's it's only that you um, enc- these realities encounter to a certain extent as it's needed now to act in relation to each other. And if there are new challenges or new levels of action, you can find out that you did not yet uh, build up enough shared realities that for both of them, or many of them that are involved, uh, are enough to do grow co-creative, constructive co-creative work. And it also assumes that creating shared reality is a necessary extra effort. So not repairing later on the problems you step into when you don't do that, but doing it uh, to prepare the field for cooperation. And here comes in the shift model of the uh, discount levels. Uh, because uh, we, we often think if there, is, there are encounter problems, it's because somebody is not so responsible, responsible or acts not so competently as, as I think he or she should do, is obliged to, could do. Uh, and you know this from the shift work, uh, instead of hassling on that level of do you write, do I write, we go first to the basic question, Do we? did we already build up a shared reality? So we start with level one. We when you think about satisfying work, what are the perspectives and facts you take in account? On the one says, oh, I take in account people around me. And the other person says, I take in account money I get. Oh, so you, your reference points are, points are totally different. When we now talk about satisfaction at work, can we define uh, some aspects we share then. And so if we have defined the, the perspective, then the next question is, and what meaning and relevance do we give this perspective and facts? So when you say money, uh, what meaning does have 
earning money for you, not money? How, how must it for you be re, uh, related to satisfaction? And how, how to deal with your colleagues? What do you mean by say should there should be good relationships? This that is when you go drink after work, go to bed with your female colleague, uh, you have a lot of fun together, or you act responsible on projects, or what does it mean? And if you have some kind of common shared reality, or at least know the perspectives of the other person, so that you can take them account in your acting. Then you can. The next question is: um, How do we have a shared understanding how things and people interact? For example, if we would, if money is important, and if we would pay more money, what do you think this was uh, bring up? And the one says, "Oh, more money makes people more satisfied." As I know, as far as I know, more money. Uh, is an effect of four weeks, then it's gone. And if people, and vice versa, if people always think when they are unsatisfied with the money question, then you have all the time money discussions. Mm. So you discuss about the understanding uh, how things interact and are really interrelated. And this is also part of understanding reality. And if you talked about all these things and have an idea how, what is shared or at least how does the other person refer to these levels of realities then you can talk about responsibilities and competencies and when you work with the discount uh, level material you can use many of the procedures and just uh, use it for this changed ways to stay the situation. So it's based on shift and as in the shift terminology problems usually ap appear on level 4 but are due to mismatching on level 1 to 3. What most of most people who have an idea of naturally being in a reality Uh, do not understand. It's new to them that you really can split it up mm. in different levels of encounter. And, and in my terminology, this is not psychological. So you just, you can just, let's first talk what you are referring to if. And so it's no problem in, uh, in cultural encounter. Um, the shift terminology was developed to organize encounter between a psychotherapist who knows what real is real and a psychotic patient who should adapt to this reality. So it's not a democratic uh, process between equals. We need that model as a, a discursive model between equals. So we have to change, to do some changes, I'll talk about this later when we talk to responsibility in in, in understanding, uh, in, in, in uh, stating the parts of this model uh, that is not psychopathological. So, and, and it shows, as we already talked about, different levels of shared frame of references, which build up into shared reality. So the changes I had, or the additions I had to make for that is, Uh, not only to talk about discounts, but also to talk about accounts. Mm. And if somebody uh, wants to tell you that his frame of reference is different than yours, and he offers a, diff a different version uh, from his side, you could, uh, or thinks about it, and you state it as an internal process, you can say you recount it. With the internal reframing, okay. and and uh, if you go with the um, difference between internal process and uh, communication process, uh, you have to change the term redefinition, redefinition, or add 
to define. Be aware of if somebody says something, he always introduces a reality. So if the first statement is two people meet, can be look at the question, which part of reality does this person introduce by that? So if the person comes and says, um, oh, it's hot today, and uh, then the person introduces that the relevant part of our shared reality is commons on atmosphere. And the other person might say, um, uh, might, might say, I'm not sure whether TA is still valid. So this person introduces a total different sphere of reality as something that could be important when we two exchange about reality. This is defining. And if the other person says, yeah, it's hot today, I can tolerate it quite well. How is it about you? The person co-defines the importance of atmosphere. And so they, by this, they have uh, built up a segment of shared reality. And the other person says, yeah, um, modern times need modern concepts of TA, but I don't know what that means. So somehow the person is saying, uh, I cannot go much with this aspect of reality, but co-defines that the question whether TA is mo modern enough or not is an accepted area of reality we can talk about. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, is it okay? Um, and the discount, account and recount, could you give an example of that? Do you mind? Oh, yes. Um, when we have a, a conflict between two managers and one is one is saying uh, that he didn't uh, reach the goals we have contracted disappointed me yeah. and the other person uh, just uh, says did I reach the goal or not then the person is yeah. Uh, discounting it's a part of uh, of connections between reaching the goal and feelings of satisfaction right. and may internally uh, uh, account for the only thing is reaching goal or not and recounting in this personal understanding of what the person had, as the other person had said by uh, maybe it's only the question who has a satisfactory um, um, uh, explanation for not reaching. Right. So it's, yeah. that's a recount. Mm -hmm. The same words yeah. are put into a frame of reference that probably are not made by mm -hmm. the sender mm -hmm. internally. Mm -hmm. And uh, if he's saying something based on this understanding of Reality is a redefin redefinition. Mm. Thank you. Mm. So, and instead of saying is we have discounts level, we say we have level of matching realities. And the more it is not likely that there will be a shared re reality, the more you have to begin on the on the lowest level of matching, and uh, and not go on until the, the basics of this low level are fixed, then you go to the second level. So it's not a question of somebody is not taking something serious, it's a question of somebody already is in tune with common shared reality. There's a, also a different attitude. I was thinking there, that therefore that logically means that if everybody involved, let's say in a system, shares the realities of that system, yeah, they, they share their perspectives, it still could be that the system might be very sick. Yes. But collectively, they don't see yes. the sickness. Yes. This model does, doesn't say anything about the quality of shared reality. Exactly. And I think that's really important to just highlight. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Good. Mm.
And this is an observer's perspective. Yes. So observer is coming, so I'm here hired for watching how you deal with each other. From my perspective, I would describe what I see the following way. How, uh, to, if you hear me saying this, how do you react? Mm. Mm. How does this match with, with you understand what is happening? Is uh, maybe something, oh yeah, it's, that's, um, that's something I often thought as well but didn't say. Or is it, mm. oh, I never thought about what we do here in that way. But then it's still, um, it's uh, a learning conversation. Mm. And the observer is clearly saying that it's his way of uh, describing reality and offering the others to deal with and not saying, I see that you, and this is why you should. Mm. And we one day will not be enough, so we need to contract for four weeks. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's a very democratic way of fighting. It's okay to fight about reality, but nobody has a real reality on his side or her side. On your side. <laughs> so. But there's something about creating a space. Yes. So that those can be put forward. I was thinking of um, Bill Holloway's um, comment that when he in 78 when ITAA had 12,000 members and he said as president look at the membership this is we have got a problem here in existing long term that nobody would listen because the space couldn't get created yeah and 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 because the the way you tell the story, nobody asked him. Tell us more on what yeah. fact and perspectives or reality yeah. level one and are you referring to? How do, what does this mean to you? Yeah. How do you see the interconnections? And if so, what should we do then? And he did that. He told how he saw it, but he and why he saw it like that. But mm -hmm. He couldn't create a space where yeah. people could listen because everybody was on the inside. Yeah. And it looked, I guess, counterintuitive to the facts. At that time, there were 12,000 members. Yeah. But he said in 25 years, we will have 200. Yeah. We are talking about communication models. Mm. Uh, and this means ways to invite others into reality. Mm. We, uh, this is not a model on confronting by power or through accidents. It's just... Uh, the art of inviting us into sharing realities, and if they, for from the, for the one of the other really doesn't want to react to that, then models like this <coughs> cannot do anything. I also enlarged, and we will have uh, this more symbiosis. Uh, I enlarged the horizons of symbiosis. To, uh, to some concepts on responsibility culture. Because symbiosis is always going along with avoiding responsibility and grow into responsibility. But it's also a deficit model. And I, I also made out of that resource and culture building model. We'll come to that later. But it's a very valuable stuff from the shift. Cassex uh, school. Jackie was very bright, and uh, for, for them, it might be it was okay to state it uh, for shaping reality between therapists and psychotic patients. But we cannot use neither as a way of thinking, nor the attitudes, nor nor the terms, if you want to use that knowledge for other professional situations. Mm -hmm. And with the concept of frame of reference, uh, the shifts also invited us into a terminology of a um, constructor's, reality constructor's view. In the classical definition of shift, frame of reference is a meta-program 
which integrates all legal states and their interaction. This is how the meta program integrates the ego states, but it's a recursive process. The ego states activate frame of references, and, and frame of reference activate ego states and interaction. And this is uh, in classical TA, if you activate the child ego state by a transaction, then the understanding of reality of the child ego state is also coming in, and it might organize all ego states of the client and maybe all ego states of the therapist. <coughs> but for, uh, I stopped to do game analy an analysis in my groups many years ago because I found out this activates a frame of reference in which people play games. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Instead, I activated a frame of reference of responsible professionality, and people have dealt with responsible professionality and forgot about their games. So, we interest. Can you say more about that? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all interested. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, culture. Culture is an art to bring. Uh, a section of reality into the foreground mm. that organizes all our personalities. So culture is activated parts of our reality and makes it, and if it's an interesting culture, uh, we put the other parts of our reality, also our pathological potentiality in the background. And I personally believe that if people have positive possibilities to live in a shared professional culture, they are not interested in their pathologies. And it's also a way of healing because they have experienced that overscribe uh, the reasons for which they have played, played games. So my interest is whenever it's possible not to cure pathologies but to build up satisfying professional cultures that help people at first put their pathologies in the background and at second uh, overscribing them because uh, positive experience nowadays in the positive cultures is overscribed and a culture helps that not every individual have to have the competence for positive uh, reality because each of us gives the other person clues to, to stay activated in a positive culture. So it's also an economical question of strategy. If you train everybody separate in the team, they might have problems to share reality, this positive reality, because they are used to giving each other stimuli for classical, habitual behavior. If you train them within a common shared framework, then at the same time you build up a, a new culture. And the chance is that they help to stabilize that culture by giving each other stimuli for that is much higher. Also, they do not, they cannot do that all on purpose. But it's, you build up a, a piece of, uh, of constructive habits, say intuitively, uh, uh, put further. So, to me, it doesn't make sense. Uh, for example, in, um, put it in, uh, into the theater metaphor. Metaphor we will uh, soon have. It does. If you have problems to come to a good play as a director, then it's a problem if you send every artist back to artist school to learn more. It's much more interesting to think about how you can build up the play thoroughly so that everybody during evolving the play understands what the role in this context can be and learns to play better the role. And if as an entrepreneur you have to decide which money to put in which kind of strategies or how to combine it, you should, should think about things like that. I don't believe there's any chance uh, 
developing the organizational culture by separately training people. Mm. It's really about changing the stroking profile of the whole group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put, put it in set terms. And how is it? The system also influences the shared reality, right? Huh? System. So we are the system. That's the system there. We are the system. When I come in with positive attitudes and your soul feels promised to have a, a dignity and be accounted for your competencies, then you, you, I, your wish to play games just diminishes because you will get stroked for something different that you even might like more. Yeah. And in general, maybe there are exceptions, but in general I believe that our main duty is to help people to develop meaningful realities. That's the best psychotherapy. And you can do this in training and organizational development and in coaching. So I believe, I never, up to now I did not yet found a, a science scientific person to do that. I invited the university, would you please uh, <coughs> diagnose people when they come in our training and diagnose when they leave our training from a psychotherapeutic mm -hmm. diagnostic system. Mm -hmm. And I bet <coughs> the progresses are at least as good as, they, as others comparable who have been in psychotherapy during that time. So. Your idea is that um, a certain <coughs> kind of educational environment yes. uh, can have the same results as a psychotherapeutic uh, process. Yes, or even better because uh, you don't have a, transference prob a, a transmission problem into real world, bec mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. already yeah, linked exactly. to real world. It's, it's, yeah. mm -hmm. And if psychotherapy means learn to deal with the shared reality that is very different from the world you have to function in, then you have the transfer problem. <coughs> so, frame of reference. And this has a lot to do with culture. It's a meta program which organizes roles and plays. Professional roles activate frame of references, and frame of references activate roles and the interplay of roles. So, if if a project is managed miserably. Uh, since there are so, introduced so, uh, so many frame of reference that organizes m mismatching of roles and not understanding that we have, that the individuals have <coughs> a lot of problems still somehow function, functioning together. But uh, it's not a solution to help them to function together better. It should be, at least for me as a boss, I, uh, I have to exchange uh, the leader or train the leader, or train them together. It's much more reasonable and economical, uh, meaningful to do that. But this also changes your understanding what the leader's task is. It should be a cultural agent, as well as somebody who is looking for tasks to accomplish. My, the way I stay, I'm sure not everybody will go with that. So, part of an essential communicative competence is clarifying and creating frame of references. Especially, for example, in a project in the beginning. And maybe... In the beginning, we should use 80% of our efforts to do that and to do, to do that not by going swimming together or riding or, some, or drinking or something, but working on tasks that are examples for what we will have to accomplish later. 
But the first goal is not to accomplish the task. The first goal is studying how our realities can match or focus on tasks like this. The modern uh, neuroscience said there is not much transfer. So if you want to learn, you have to learn it within the context related to the knowledge and the task where you want to gain the competence. If you do too much task, it's not enough energy left for learning a shared culture. If you do no, no task, and first one by being just a, together as human beings, you do not learn focus, you do not learn roles, you do not learn uh, time management, mm -hmm. and you may like your, each other yeah. more. But that's a, this doesn't mean an organization that you could cooperate better in a specific sphere of reality. You know, you will get all the... Okay. So just do what you need to do for organize yes. yourself. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So this was a the one of the communication models. So somehow I guess it's totally familiar to you. And somehow maybe it, it's a new way to state it, that you have a language to discuss problems like this. I was only wondering about the difference between the meta model, the meta model used in NLP for identifying the shared reality and uh, yes. in what way uh, this is different. But I think both yeah. It comes to get it. Yeah, yeah. It has a lot in common. And uh, the metal model in TA is not uh, oriented to organizations. Or is it? The meta model in NLP. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's not oriented to as organization. It's a psychological model. Okay. This is not okay. a psychological model. Okay, so that can be fit into this uh, organizational model. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. But many things, I, I've trained. NLP for a long time. Many things are very useful. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, they studied Virginia uh, Ben and Grinder and these guys studied Virginia Satie, Milton, Satia and Milton Erickson. Mm -hmm. They studied, studied people who did psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. And we have also to transform these models uh, that they can be used in all professional fields. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, Maybe we, sh we don't have to do much there, but we should be aware that in many little pieces of communication, the idea that it's a psychological question and it's an individual question is coming through. So mm -hmm. we should be aware of this. Mm, makes sense. Mm -hmm. So then we have another dialogue model, another communication model I call the dialogue model of communication. And the principles I have already explained, and we worked on that in the guided imagery. These are models that look like this. This should be, for example, two persons. And it's going back to the Jungian understanding of consciousness, individual unconsciousness, collective unconsciousness, or it's going back to the model from Milton Erickson, the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. <coughs> it's, it is saying that we have a, a level we can analytically understand, a conscious level of culture, and we can adopt methods to build up culture and deal with culture. And this is important, that it's, um, it's not just intuitive. But it is a smaller sphere we organize ourselves in. The larger field is that somehow we tie into each other's reality, each of us, and we uh, do not really know what's in the back of our organization of reality. And we do not know what the other is in the back of the other person. But intuitively we come to that when we talk about intuition, but intuitively it comes somehow we know. But if we don't, don't have dialogue within us, we don't know what we know, but we act.
according to what we intuitively know. But what we intuitively know may be wrong or inadequate to the role. It may be right, but not significant for the situations we are in. So it, it, it needs to be uh, supervised and developed. And each of us should learn to dialogue internally. And if we in an organization have a communication culture that we mutually dialogue on that like we did after the guided imagery, then the chance that we that I let myself know what my hunch is and as I tell the other person what's coming up to my mind when I listen to the person, then the other person can get an idea, oh, is that true? Is what comes up in my system and so we will have a cross dialogue in between people and between the spheres and thus uh, and because it's done transparently there's a chance that it's leading to a common shared culture and that it's corrected and focused on what is important for what we have to know about each other here and even it's right that I have the one or the other impression about the other person I, I make myself uh, aware that it's not important for two hours of business meeting so I can let it go it will not interfere when I know it when I don't know it I have an emotional reaction and I might uh, attribute this to the, our role relationship and then it, it interferes and for example, when you think at assessment processes in organizations, what are they doing? A lot of analytical stuff, but very often it's only setting up the stage for everybody intuitively somehow wants to decide whether this person is smelling good or not. If that's the case, why not doing, doing this from the beginning and doing it uh, purposely and actively? talking about each other's imaginations, mm -hmm. uh, finding out from what perspective do I have these imaginations? Do I have these imaginations as a, a future boss of this person or as a possible co um, um, customer or as a possible partner in work? And which of the images that came up are really relevant to the criteria, so to the dimension we have to work together. And then it's, it's possible to talk about and to learn about together. If it's just done somehow, everyone does it not knowing, but somehow comes to a conclusion, the chances that there are good conclusions is not so high. So, the dialogue model refers to intuition concepts of Byrne, Jung, and Milton Erickson. It shows how methodical, methodical and intuitive levels of communication together contribute to co-creative realities. And professional competence and organizational culture depend on focusing on focused dialogues between these spheres. Analytical and methodic methodological processes on the surface in dialogue with intuitive, creative, meaningful background forces set the stage for personal and professional self-guidance and for performance and vitality in complex organizations. This doesn't mean always to bring backgrounds to the foreground. It's also okay, just leave them in the background, but um, relating to these images in the background by metaphors we exchange. So it's not a method to, to, to uh, force people into intimacy they do not want. Mm -hmm. And this leads me to a, another uh, schema. I ask myself, we, we talk about encounter. Who or what encounters when people encounter? 
And if you have different frame of reference, give you different ideas what that encounter is about. If you think, if you are behavior oriented, you say behaviors meet each other. Then you can describe whether one behavior is fitting to the other behavior. You can, on a transactional level, say, does the person respond adequately to the behavior of the other person? And if you think behavior is, uh, is to be developed, then you do behavioral training. But we all know that even if the other person doesn't behave quite exactly, when we feel the right attitude, we are very much willing to understand it right, what the mm -hmm. person is trying to do, and we are uh, invited into positively codifying, although uh, the invitation was not very competent. Or if somebody is um, communicating, communicating, following all the rules we know, like in advertisement, and we have the feeling he only wants to sell me something, he's not at all interested in where, where I am, it doesn't help that the per mm. person is behaviorally <laughs> trained optimal. So, if we think there are attitudes who meet each other, we do something different if it doesn't work. So, how can we focus on attitudes? That's a different kind of training. <coughs> <coughs> and if we think, if, when people meet, personal myths are meeting. <coughs> So the one has a personal miss if there is a challenge. Somebody has lead us and we all uh, avoid uh, disregarding all pains will follow this person. That's the mythology with which somebody tries to go on. And another person has the other mythology. Uh, if there is a problem, we should all sit together under the palava tree and found out who knows what and how we can deal with the situation. If these two people, because of their expertise in behavior and in knowledge, together should lead uh, um, a project, it might be that they understand that you, they should be complementary, but it might be that they, un, uh, in the background, find about the right mythology. So, if you think if people work together, it has also to do with their mythology, how they can tune into each other's idea. And this is a perspective that you think whatever you do uh, in profession, it's also a way to enroll your positive script, your mythology. Then it's worthwhile to look at people who have shared responsibility, how each of them or and or complementary they can lose their miss in that job. This is personal miss. We know about this through the Burns work, we know about uh, this by concepts of, of Jung, um, the daimon and all these things. But this is personal, personal historical. What's about the myths within different companies, for example? There's a merger of two companies. And the one company has a different myth that all people somehow share as the other. Mm -hmm. So it's not, these are not personal myths, these are organizational myths, or the one comes from China, the other comes from Germany, so they are also traditions and myths of. Uh, myths of tradition. So if you think in these terms, you focus <coughs> on something different when you try to find out what shared realities could be. So this is, uh, makes clear that this uh, communication perspective we learned in classical TA, two private people with a social level of conversation on, in the foreground and a psychological level in the background, is a very, very small part of the whole picture. And when when we want to work more generally, we uh, consciously should think about which <coughs> parts of possible encounter are relevant. 
was this kind of book. And we can try it with attitudes, and we find attitudes as not anything that helps. So we have to find out, is it behavior that is not transporting attitudes? Or do we not understand attitudes enough as long we do not understand the myths behind? Are there individual myths, and we can talk about this, or are the persons representatives of organizational myths without knowing that? They just, because they have just intuitively, habitually learned it, they act on it. They are, they are not <coughs> the ones who do it. They are also the ones who suffer from it. Or, or, and, they, and they do not understand why they are doing things. And, we, and, and so it doesn't make sense to ask them which contract for understanding encounter do they want to have, because it's not in their point of view. You as a professional from outside should have ideas what kind of reality levels you want to offer and you <coughs> think it's appropriate for this kind of work to be accomplished. So you have a, an active responsibility. You cannot say, this is what the client wanted. So whatever you consider as being a foreground, there are millions of possible backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And then you have to decide, and this is what you always have to decide in systemic thinking, you have to decide if I focus on this, uh, how, how big is the frame around that I have to take into account to understand the situation. And if I want to understand how things are working in the foreground, I have to think about what background forces of these millions I should take into account. They make a difference to better understand what is happening on the foreground. And it's not all the psychological level. <coughs> Sometimes it's just the way people are paid for. They optimize their earning money. And when they are paid for selling as much as they can, and punished for cooperation, <laughs> then this is a frame of reference and backgrounds that cannot be, cannot be overdone by liking each other. I said it often enough, enough now that classical and especially clinical TA had its special focuses that are good, but are specializations. It's not the overall explanation model. In organizational work, we need much, many more dimensions of reality, like organizational roles, structures, market dynamics, technical and economical criteria in shaping processes. And we need content and we need context. And all that happens within a bigger framework, like uh, the imperialistic economy system. <coughs> and especially in companies uh, that are on the stock and are driven by financial um, criteria of return on investment, you cannot understand how they do their work until you understand how they are forced to make their money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the challenge is not habitually bringing background to the foreground, just considering it. It's like you can, you can have the metaphor of a, a screen in the foreground, and many uh, sometimes there's in, in, in use in the TV is that kind. In the background are all these other screens, but they are not put in the foreground. And you have a decision what to put in the foreground and what to put in the background, and if you put something in the foreground, never forget, this is only a choice right now and can at any point be put back in the background. Mm -hmm. And then you have to think about uh, how to create and take care of useful foreground communication because you cannot focus on, on everything at a, at a time. And in accordance and or dialogue with helpful backgrounds. 
because we decided to put that in the foreground doesn't mean we skip everything else. And you stay sensible for background forces at work. Also, it might be not appropriate to, uh, to draw them into the foreground of your dialogue. And, and classically, in, sci in psychology, uh, meet, work with the background meets talking about. But in organizations, you very often cannot do that. But this doesn't mean that you ignore it. You find ways to, to, to relate to it through the, through the foreground communication. And you do meta communication if necessary and invite your, uh, your client also to use the meta communication if he or she thinks somehow it's not easy to come together to find a shared reality. Mm. And this is easier if you do not uh, act on a, on a, a sub, subliminal, um, subliminal <laughs> power struggle on what, which reality is more valid. Good mm. things. This is my reality. This is serious. Maybe these two are not enough. Maybe we need a third one. Can, can we have a, a learning conversation on a meta level? How we too want to design our learning process on that. 